Hey guys, this is Dr. Sean over at the Natural Body Works, and I've been working with people naturally for health and stuff like that for over 20 years. And I know you've probably looked at ways to improve your immune system, and you've found all the same stuff. So here's seven ways that you can improve that beyond the basic stuff that you've heard. If you do a run of the internet and you look at other bigger sites, especially insurance sites and sites of Western medicine, you're going to find ways to improve your immune system. And they're probably going to tell you the basic five, which are going to be so just too basic. We need to go beyond those. And this is what I'm going to do here. So the basic ones usually are do things like manage stress. Uh, really? Uh, eat better. What the hell does that mean? Um, exercise, really? Uh, what are the other ones here? I have the whole list that I that I, I looked at probably fifteen different sites, and this is what, and these these are like the sites: WebMD and uh, the Kaiser and stuff through Yale and and all this kind of stuff. We're, we we expect to get good information from these guys, right? But we're not really getting it. So. Um, Stop smoking, eat more fruits and vegetables, get more sleep, exercise regularly, avoid or reduce alcohol, maintain a healthy weight, wash your hands and cook your meat. Okay, that's, that's, I mean, okay, that, that's good advice, but what do we do above and beyond that? We're trying to maintain a healthy lifestyle. These are the basics. Now we know how much you can go crazy on how much and what kind of exercises you want to do. What kind of diet you want to do. Do you want to do a paleo diet, a keto diet? Do you want to do a vegetarian, a vegan diet? Do you want to do a paleo vegan diet? I don't know. There's some things that we can actually do on a daily basis that aren't going to take huge changes in your life to make a big difference over some time. Now, there's seven ones that I've identified or expanded upon, I should say, uh, for these things. Now, <clears throat> um, I've been meaning to do this, this video for a long, long time. And one of the reasons is because this is stuff that I want to explain to people every day. Especially now with this big pandemic, we're trying to find out exactly what do we need to do to, to, to build our own defense, our internal defenses, and help ourselves keep from getting this, and if we do get it, how it can be actually less. Now, it's not all just relying on going to the hospital and getting intubated. I mean, that's just not the case with the vast majority of people who get this. Now, why are some people getting it much more than others? That, that, that some get it and die within days. Some get it and linger on for weeks. And some get it and have mild symptoms. Why is that? It's because of their immune system, their own internal resilience, their own vital, vital force. We would call it innate intelligence in chiropractic because that's the, or universal intelligence, which you could call a God even, or the universe or whatever. And that information getting through the system, okay, what is it that makes you alive, right? That's got to get to where it needs to go. And that's where we've got to give it all the things it needs to do to get there. What is that going to mean? Well, okay, in chiropractic, we say, yeah, make sure you get the adjustments to open up the, the nerve channels and all this. Acupuncture, we say, open up the meridian channels to allow the chi to flow. Same thing, right? Very similar. In uh, nutrition, we're like, hey, give it all of the, the building blocks, the fuel and the foods and the things that you need, which are going to be things like your vital amines, your vitamins, those, and your amino acids, which build up your proteins, your oils, which build up your fats that you need for things and your carbohydrates, which are fuel, and also give you some of the backbone and some other parts to the DNA and RNA and some other parts that you need. So if you don't get those, how are you gonna make them? Where are you gonna pull this stuff from? That's why we have things like essential and non-essential vitamins, essential and non-essential uh, uh, amino acids. Now, I've been doing this kind of stuff forever. And when I first started out, I was in college, I was working for a pharmacist. And he was, a, he was kind of a compounding pharmacist. He used to make a lot of his own stuff from the chemistry that we would get. We'd get big tubs of pills and all these kind of things. And I remember asking him about vitamins. And he said, well, if you really want expensive urine, go ahead and waste your money because they're completely useless. And that was only in the 80s, guys. 
That wasn't that long ago. And that was the prevailing thought of the time. Most of the people who were working had been working for a while. So there wasn't a lot of real young docs working out in the world as their own people, pharmacists, medical doctors, whatever. They had some experience. And their experience came from the 60s and 70s and 50s and 40s and stuff like that, where the opinions are so different than they are today. Um, now, it's 20, 30 years later, after that event in my life, and <laughs> uh, there's still that same kind of idealism. Look at those, if you go to those different sites and you look at like, how do I improve my immune system? What's it gonna get you? The basics. So let's go over the first one. The first one is gonna be um, water. Okay, water, good water. You need a lot of water. How much water do you need? Well, you just need one ounce per kilogram. How do you know how many kilograms you are? Take your normal weight, say mine's 200 pounds, divide by two close enough. That's 100, right? Now I take 100 ounces. How much is an ounce? Well, eight ounces is one cup. Okay. So a 12 ounce soda can. So I need to drink about, let's say 10 of those a day of water to maintain my biology, my physiology, right? I want to make sure that things are moving properly. Some days I'm not going to get that much. Some days I'm going to get more. Sometimes in the foods, there are some in there as well. If I eat celery or lettuce or tomatoes or fruits and stuff like that, this is one of the reasons that, like, uh, they used to say an apple a day keeps the doctor away because it had pectin, it had some nutrients, it had some sugar, and it had a lot of water. It was an easy way to carry around water was an apple. Okay? So that's an, that's an easy first one we have there. Okay, the second thing that we need, that we all need for, for proper metabolism, and this is, you know, water was the first one. You need it for everything that you do. Okay, if you're going to make proteins, if you're making fats, if you're dissolving proteins, if you're dissolving fats, if you're maintaining pH balance, if you're um, digesting things or producing things, you need water. The next thing that you need is air. How more vanilla can we get with that? But this is funny because this is not anything that they say in any of those previous sites that I mentioned. Air, oxygen, O2. O2, that's the thing you need for metabolism. Metabolism is what? Metabolism is, is how you use your foods to build your body and maintain your body. But there's cellular metabolism, which is where all the sugars that you bring in and everything that's boiled down to make sugars, which needs water and oxygen. You use that sugar in the, each cell to build energy. Energy in the form of what's called ADP. This is all physiology stuff. Now, if you don't have oxygen, it doesn't work. It's called anaerobic. You build up lactic acid. Lactic acid causes pain if it's in the muscles. Otherwise, it's kind of a poison. It's an acid that your body tries to get rid of. One way to get rid of it, breathing out. Way to get more oxygen, breathe in. So we have to maintain a good respiratory function. Good respiratory volume, which is how much you can bring in, and a respiratory rate, which is how fast. What's a normal respiratory rate? 12 to 20 a minute. Now, some people breathe a lot smaller, if you're uh, smaller, a lot, lot slower than that, especially if you're relaxed. You could go six or four times a minute. It's not unheard of. If you're excited, you're upset, you're maybe acidic, you're gonna, bleed, you're gonna breathe far more than 18, maybe 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. You know, maybe 40 times a minute because you're panting, right? That's what air does, okay? Air is needed to off-gas um, CO2 and acids Okay, in the form of carbonic acid, which is what carb CO2 is dissolved in the blood plasma, the liquid portion of blood. And it's also to bring in that oxygen so that you can exchange it, put it on your red blood cells, travel it around and drop it off to where it's needed, which is going to be everywhere. So you're going to need more. Now, easy ways to check that, get yourself a pulse oximeter. They're not real, um, they're not the best things in the whole wide world, but it's a good, it's a good tool to look at things over time. Put it on your finger, it'll tell you what your pulse oximetry rate is. As long as it's over 90, you should be fine. Um, you'll notice that you can change it with a couple things, deeper breathing, and moistening your finger. If your fingers are warm and moist, it's going to be higher. So there's a trick for you. The other one, too, that we used to do back in the old days, I don't think anybody does it anymore, is take your finger like this, and you push, and you see that white part of the fingernail right there, and then you let go. And if you can say the word capillary refill, or oxygenation, whatever, and it's still white, that means that you're not getting red blood cells to that area. You're probably not getting oxygen to that area. It could be because you're very cold. Okay, it could be because you're very sick. So those are things we want to do with air. That's the second one. The third part that we have to worry about or we should be working on to improve our immune system is our human biome. What? Our human biome, what the hell is that? That is the bacteria, viruses, parasites, amoebas, all the good guys that live on you now. 
you have 10 times the number of cells of other critters than are you. Especially look at it inside your gut, inside your stomach, inside your small intestine, large intestine, all of those areas in your appendix, in your mouth, in your nose. There's all kinds of what are called normal flora. There should be fauna too because they're, they're considered critters, man. These are, these are animals and you have many that are very normal. In some people, uh, lactobacillus is very normal. In some people, E. coli is completely normal and non-harmful to you if everything else is in balance. Notice I said if. Now, remember when the germ theory came out, Louis Pasteur and all those guys, right? They said, germs bad, must kill all germs. Germs evil, must kill everything. And this was in the 1880s, 18, whatever, 1800s, late 1800s. Uh, the germ theory just started. So they tried to get rid of all of the germs, no matter what. And that backfired. When you do that too much, you actually inhibit the way that the body can work properly. We are part of this earth, if you will. We're part of the soil. We come from dust and we go back to dust. We, we all know this saying, right? From dust to dust. And the important thing is to get out in the dirt. You know, you get out in the dirt, you do some planting, you do some eating some good organic or homegrown foods is one of the best ways you can replenish your, your, your normal biome, your normal internal environment. Like think of your, your large intestine as like the rainforest, how important that is, how many things it makes for you. It helps make B12. It helps maintain your balance, your pH balance. It helps maintain a lot of things for you, your, your regularity, your mood. We now know that the internal gut stuff determines depression. So change that. Other ways to change it too, fermented foods. Home fermented foods are probably the best. So make your own pickles, make your own sauerkraut, make your own kimchi. Or go buy those things and buy them so they're not pasteurized because pasteurization has already killed all that stuff and those are just dead fellers running around there. They're useful but uh, we need the, the real muck, good yogurt and those kind of things. Kefir, those, those are, uh, go for the kombucha, whichever one it works. And those will help you uh, maintain a good defense. It's like having a neighborhood. Do you want all good people to live there? So invite all the good people, all your friends, all the people you know that are cool and groovy and wash their houses and clean their yards and don't make a lot of mess and, and clean up after themselves, whatever. If you don't and you get rid of them all, like let's say you took antibiotics and you killed off a bunch of them because it doesn't know who to kill. It kills everybody, right? So it kills everybody, empties out that neighborhood. Who moves in if you don't pay attention? Anybody. All the bad guys. Some bad gang or something like that come and squat in one of the buildings. They take over the rest of the neighborhood. They start causing problems. Now you're sick. How to get rid of it? Now you got to take another antibiotic. Kill the rest of them off. It's better to like, if you do take an antibiotic, wait till you're done with the antibiotic. Take it the whole time, of course. And then when you're done, get yourself some probiotics and prebiotics. What are prebiotics really? Probiotics, prebiotics, really kind of the same thing. But a lot of times, if you think of a prebiotic or something that like um, helps them, is going to be sugar. So eat good food. Okay, prebiotics would be food that's grown in soil, very good for you, food that was hand-picked and not um, uh, pesticided and all that kind of stuff, so wash your fruits too. Anyway, that's number, what, that's number three. Number four is, number four here is what I call strategic supplementation. If you're doing just for your immune system, let's go with some basics now. Vitamin D3. D3, that's the one that your body makes when you're exposed to the sun. If you don't get outside, and nobody gets outside, trust me, unless you work outside with no shirt on all day, you're not getting enough vitamin D because of the ultraviolet rays. If you live in the north like I do, and you're darker skinned, no way. Your skin, the skin to color blocks, the darker the color, the more it blocks the UV rays. And the UV rays are what stimulate the body to make vitamin D. If you don't make vitamin D, you can't make some hormones and neurotransmitters and other factors which would be uh, some of your proteins, which are gonna be uh, immune, immune function stuff, okay? So make sure you have vitamin D. Vitamin C, good for mucous membranes, also really good for uh, collagen upkeep, okay? So you want to keep the, the control of everything connected in there, and that's vitamin C. It's a very good one. Zinc, we know already, is one of those things that we can take and help stop viruses from replicating. It's just one of those things that just happens to uh, uh, contribute to healthier reproduction of your own cells and limits the reproduction of the 
uh, viruses. Same thing with lysine. L-lysine is a really good one. It's very good for antiviral stuff. You can use it for that. It's very good for like cold sores and herpes and things like that. Start taking that stuff lots and you start taking that, you'll, it'll reduce the virus load and the virus replication rate. It's just one of those things. Arginine does increase it, but uh, uh, lysine shows to decrease that. So it's a really good one to take. Um, other ones that I have usually people do is, let's see, vitamin C, D3, zinc, magnesium. Get your minerals. Your minerals are what your factors are to make some of your other uh, neurotransmitters, enzymes, and stuff like that. So let's get your minerals in there too, and it's also a part of the, the function of the cellular works, right? There's a potassium, sodium, potassium pump. There's magnesium involved in this. There's sodium, there's potassium, uh, uh, magnesium, and all these guys. So there you go. That's number four. Number five. Number five is movement, both internal and external. External, get your body moving. Movement is life to the joints. If you don't move, it ain't gonna work, right? You gotta move your hands, otherwise they're gonna stiffen up. Frozen shoulder, for example, is from not moving the shoulder because it hurts. Well, that makes sense, right? You don't wanna move it where it hurts, but you have to start getting the motion back in there. Internal movement is going to the bathroom and peeing, drinking the water, getting your fiber, getting your whatever to, to increase your bowel movements and the motility and mobility of everything through is a good thing for you, okay? You should be going to the bathroom at least once a day. If you're eating once a day, you should go once a day because where is that stuff gonna go anyway? And also, you're dumping all kinds of... of, of uh, dead blood, dead cells and stuff that you've, you've processed, they got to go somewhere. They're going to go out through your gut and come out through your bowel. So don't forget to do those. Number six now. We're at number six. Number six is really relax. Learn to relax. That means what? Um, meditations, guided meditations, sleep, change your sleeping pattern, change where you sleep. Sometimes where you sleep is the, is the issue. Turn your mattress around. Get a different pillow. Sleep on the floor. Sleep on the couch. Sleep outside. Sleep inside. Sleep somewhere else. Whatever. Just sleep. Get good rest. The other one is breathing exercises. We already talked about air, right? Breathing exercises are excellent ways to maintain relaxation and improve oxygenation and help your body feel more relaxed and be more relaxed. Belly breathing versus chest breathing. Belly breathing, you can actually use that diaphragm. That'll actually improve the way that your brain works. It'll improve the way your whole body works. It'll improve your metabolism. Other ones too, acupuncture. Acupuncture is a great resource where you will really relax. One, you can't go anywhere the whole 20 minutes you have needles in you because if you move, it hurts. So you're gonna have to relax. It forces you to relax. Um, getting organized is a good, a good one too. Clean something. You wanna feel relaxed? Get something done. Because everything all in your head right there, because you're not getting stuff done. Get something done. As soon as you're done with this video, don't forget to subscribe, by the way. As soon as you're done with this video, go clean something. Just one thing. Just just the sink. That's it. Or one corner of your room. The car. Go in and get all the stuff under the car. You know that's in your head. Get it out of there. Okay? Uh, the last one on that one, um, you know, <laughs> supplement with, with, with your vices. I don't think it's a bad thing as long as you don't overdo it, right? Moderation is okay. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Maybe a little bit of uh, herbal tea. Maybe the CBDs that everybody's going crazy about. I don't like them. They give me headaches. You can use maybe some red wine or maybe um, music is an excellent vice. Playing music or listening to music. Anyway, that's six out of seven. Now, number seven. Number seven is maintain and improve your lines of defense. What are your lines of defense? Your first one is all around you right now. It covers you completely. It's your biggest organ. It's the greatest organ you have to, to get stuff out of you and in you, really. It's your skin. It's a big doozy guy. If you keep this intact and clean it, washing hands and stuff like that, a lot of stuff sits on there. And then you spread it around. You touch everything and all this kind of stuff. And touch things and back on you and stick in your nose and whatnot. These things, you clean that keep it intact so that there's no entryway for other things to get in there and we're good to go. Second one is mucous membranes. Mucous membranes are anything that there's an opening for. Mucous membranes could be uh, all of your sensory openings and all of your reproductive openings, all of your respiratory openings and your digestive openings. That's coming and going by the way. So mucous membrane, mucous membrane, mucous membrane, mucous membrane, mucous membrane, mucous membrane, mucus, all the mucous membranes, all openings to the outside. If those are maintained well, how do we maintain them? Usually with just cleaning and making sure you're hydrated. There's the big one. And making sure you have the right vitamins and amino acids. So 
There we go back to diet again, right? All connected. Now, last one in that that whole section is going to be your your white blood cells. Now, you got to have the the stuff to make those things, and that's going to be through um, one your biome, two your ability to make what it needs to make, and that's going to be through your bone marrow. So you're going to have to have really good fats in your diet. You're going to have to have really good relaxation in your life. You're going to have the parasympathetic, sympathetic nervous systems all balanced, and that's going to help you maintain those. Now, we can introduce some things through like working in the soil. You're going to introduce other uh, uh, bacteriums and viruses and things that, you know, most of them are good. Now, you, you can get some bad ones, of course, but that's also why we also have things like vaccines. Sometimes vaccines can be useful. I don't like them personally because uh, there's a lot of um, uh, more politicking about them than anything, and uh, their f efficacy isn't as great as they say they are, but that's a whole other ball of wax, and we're not going to get into that. But I think that they're useful in certain times, and, and hey... If they're available and you're feeling confident and you see everybody else has had it and had no problem, why not take it, right? Anyway, this is uh, Dr. Sean over at The Natural Body Works. Be healthy. This is how to get healthy. Go deeper. Look deeper. Give me a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to watch the other videos. We have a lot of other ones on stretching and, and the acupuncture pen. Which is this thing here. Um, I did a bunch of videos on that, on how to use it for things like stress, which we talked about, and how to use it for... Uh, all kinds of things. Anyway, this is this is a pretty, pretty uh, uh, big one. I'll put as many of the references as I can in the description below, and if not, I'll have that on my website, oh, on my blog, Natural Body Works Parker. Anyway, this is Dr. Sean. You guys be healthy.